Hello everyone and welcome to .NET Core Central. Today's video is also going to be a continuation of discussing fundamental programming concepts of C Sharp. And today I'm going to focus on arrays. Just like any other data types, arrays are also related to problems that we face in real life. For example, when we deal with a deck of cards, there are 52 cards in a deck of cards. Now, if we have to declare those 52 cards, there are 52 variables that we have to declare. And that is not a very efficient way, especially during programming. And if we have to do certain operations on those 52 items, that's going to be very tedious. And this is where the array data type or the concept of array comes in play and becomes very handy for us. Arrays are fundamentally a data structure where we can save or store multiple variables of the same type. And the type can be an int, it can be a string, or it can be a complex type of user-defined objects. Now, arrays are there are three main types of arrays one or there are three main dimensions of arrays first one is a single dimensional array second one is multi-dimensional and the third type is jagged array and we're going to discuss about all the three in this video so first let's start with the simplest one which is single dimensional array and single dimensional array is probably the one which will be used mostly in commercial applications because most of the time we deal with a collection of data which is a single dimensional array. So for declaring a single dimensional array, first we declare the type. So let's say we are declaring an array of integer in which case we'll declare it like this and we can name it as for example values is equal to new int of 1 to 10 whatever we want to do we can declare it this way and here we're basically declaring an integer array of 10. now once we declare the array there are a couple of ways we can declare this first of all here when we declare we're just saying we have an array of integer and it can hold up to 10 items, but we have not declared the item themselves. So for the item, what we can do is we can just declare the items here itself. So we can do something like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So we declare 10 item. And here essentially we have initialized the array along with the declaration. And if we get rid of the initialization, then we are just declaring the array here. And then we have to initialize the array somewhere else. And for that, there are multiple ways of doing. One of the ways is using for, which we are going to cover in the subsequent video. But if we just have to declare this, we can do something like this values of zero is one, values of one is two, values of two is three, three is four, and so on and so forth. So this is another way of declaring the values or initializing the values of an array is we take the array and then we provide the index. Index means the point where we want to set the value. There are 10 items in this array and index number always starts from zero and then increments by one so we are saying the zeroth item of the array is one first item is two second item is three and so on and so forth so this is the way of declaration the other way of doing the declaration as well as initialization is we don't even need to do this we can just we can just declare an array here and then we can do like this and based on the number of item here that will be the size of the array so here we declared seven item the size of the array is seven so if we do 
values dot length this is going to give the length of the array and this is going to essentially show s7 in this case we can run this and show this but this is just one of the property length which is very important in case of array which gives the length of the array so this is how we can declare a single dimensional arrow and for the single dimensional array as i mentioned there are three ways to declare one is just declaration one is declaration with initialization one is just direct initialization which also declares the array so that's with the single dimensional array and as i mentioned earlier single dimensional array is probably one of the most heavily used array that we use on a day to day example now apart from int the array can be of string so you can have string items is equal to and you can declare like this one two three and then if you have for example if you have a record type item which has string string name string address let's say then here you can also declare an array of item called items and given we already have an item let's just delete this and here equal to i can say new item array of 2 so that can be a way of declare or you can write here a new item item here x y comma new item p and here we are defining as well as declaring the array of type item so in this example we have so far showed an integer string as well as a user defined type now instead of record type it can be a class the behavior is going to remain exactly the same so this is single dimensional array now if we have to declare a multi dimensional array we can declare it let's say a multi dimensional integer array so we need two dimension so it's going to be declared this way multi int let's say is equal to new int of 2 we have to get the record type below otherwise we'll have this problem because this doesn't have a class this is i'm just doing inside the main method so the record type has to be the last one now it is saying 2 by 2 array or it can be 2 by 4 so if it is let's say if it is 2 by 2 int then essentially we're saying array of array so it's going to be 1 comma 2 and then 2 comma 3 so it became a 2 by 2 array here if we say 2 by 3 then we're going to have 1 2 3 and 2 3 4 as our array now instead of that if we say 3 by 2 then we are going to have two item on each and then there are total three items in the array so this is how we can declare a multi-dimensional array and multi-dimensional array is same like single dimensional array we can declare it as string or int or whatever we want now multi-dimensional array doesn't have to be just two dimension we can also declare a multi-dimensional array as three-dimensional array and here let's say we have two 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 
and in this case if we have to initialize this we can have one two three four and then we can have one two three four let's say for simplicity i'm just keeping two same values but this can be something else this can be 10 20 30 40 so now we created three dimensional array and we declared it this way so that's about multi-dimensional array there's the second type of array that we can use and this is also in my experience is rarely used in a day-to-day -day programming and then finally what we have is called a jagged array a jagged array is something where we have variety of dimension for the array. So for example, let me just give an example because it's easier to explain. So if we have a jagged array like that, it's a jagged items thing. And then we can say equal to new of int. And here for the int array, we can say the first item is three and second item is unknown. Meaning when we declare the array itself will decide what will be the dimension of the response or, or the, of the other type of the array. So, so here we can say jagged item of zero is equal to new int of two. So we are saying that the zeroth index of this jagged array is going to have two item. And then similarly, we can have the first one having three and then second one is having four. So here we can have one comma two here one two three and for this one one two three four so as you can see for this item for each individual item the number of item inside of it is different first one is having two second one is three third one is four or it can be any number but the main point is for normal arrays that we have declared so far for example the two-dimensional array the number of items are fixed across the indexes. Whereas in a jagged array, the number of items are not fixed across the indexes. So that is the fundamental difference between a multidimensional array and a jagged array. So that is all I wanted to cover for today's video, the basic fundamental concept of array and the three different types of array that we can use. Whereas I already mentioned that single dimensional array is probably the mostly used array when it comes to real life programming. In occasions, you might be using multi-dimensional array, but most cases it's going to be end up having single dimensional array. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up. If you are new to my channel and if you think you are getting value out of my channel, please subscribe to my channel. And thanks so much for watching this video.